Welcome back friends. So this is the second scenario that I was talking about earlier uh, in the previous video. Uh, we want to like you know import uh, a CSV file directly from the FTP folder. Uh, it is not uh, encrypted or compressed. So in this particular scenario we want like you know use the file drop automation as well uh, and as soon as the file is actually dropped into our FTP folder we want to be able to like import that into our data extension. right? Um, so in this particular uh, workflow, uh, you will see like you know we've used the file drop, and there's there's only one activity that we will use. So let's quickly go and you know check the configuration here. Um, I've used the file drop, as you can see, like it's the import e-commerce folder that I'm looking for. Uh, if you go into uh, the configuration here, you will see like uh, it's we're not using any file name pattern. In the earlier uh, example, we were using the file name pattern, and that was like specifically for files that matched a pattern. We were like you know looking and kicking off this uh, workflow. In this particular case, what happens is like if you drop any file uh, into the e-commerce folder, this particular automation workflow will kick off. So we're going to use this one um, for this example. And uh, the import file um, uh, configuration, let's quickly go through that. Uh, so we're uh, going to be updating the data extension called order details DE, uh, which is right here that you can see here. Uh, it's got like three fields and zero records right now. I cleared all the records so we can test that out once the import is complete. Uh, it's going to look for uh, the file location here. It's called the e-commerce folder in the import. Uh, and as you can see here, we did not give the actual file name, right? Uh, the earlier example you saw, I just gave the products dot. Um, PGP, uh, the CSV.pgp file, uh, but here I didn't use like the order details.csv file as is. Uh, what I've actually given is like the percentage file name from trigger. This is a, uh, a string that we can actually use. Uh, it actually refers to the the, uh, the name of the file that actually just got dropped into the, the file drop uh, folder that it's looking for, right? Um, so it's quite useful like and if you have like multiple files coming in you don't have to like keep configuring each file name like and then have a separate import definition whatever file comes in use that particular name and then just go ahead and run the automation right uh, but yeah I mean as long as it maps to the specific data extension if it's like different files for different data extensions you uh, will make sure like you know it's uh, the the destination is the correct one as well okay uh, in this particular case, we were expecting the order details DE to come in, uh, sorry, the CSV to come in, and then we have already mapped it to the order details DE uh, data extension. Uh, we've given the overwrite uh, option. Um, so that's pretty much in the configuration part. Let me go out of here. I want to make sure I activate it this time. So we don't have any activities running for now. Um, so I have the FTP here. And that's the file that I want to like you know import in as well. Okay, so as you can see, there's no records. Uh, so I'll go here. Let me bring my FTP back. I've just uploaded the file order details.csv into the e-commerce folder. As soon as I go here, you will see the file drop just kicked off right now. It's looking and it's give you the full name, right? The order details.csv what is what the file is actually encountered in the import e-commerce folder. Uh, and the next one is running the activity right now. It's actually doing the import activity. So we didn't have to go and do any of the file transfer activities. We didn't have to move it to the safe house. Directly from the FTP, you can actually uh, import the data uh, into your data extension using this one. So once it's complete, you will see that it's, it's completed and it's green and you will get an email notification if you've configured that. Let's go here, uh, just take a look at our uh, data extensions, come back. And there you see, if the record count has just moved to 100, so that means it actually just updated uh, the order details DE with the the, uh, the records from the file that we just completed. So there you have it, folks. Like that's how you actually uh, do a file drop automation, a simple one where you uh, are not expecting a um, a compressed or a encrypted file uh, in the FTP, and you can directly read from it and import that data into your data extension. So these were the two examples of how you would do uh, file drop automation, right? And a couple of examples of uh, how the automation workflows would look like uh, when you want to bring data in. Uh, now we'll look at similar examples for these, but uh, instead of using the file drop, uh, let's say how you use schedule. Like you know, if you want to like uh, run, you're expecting a file to come in every day. 
um, and then you want to like run it up probably around like you know uh, non-business hours you want to probably run it during the night maybe 12 a.m. or like 2 a.m. or something uh, so you're expecting the file to be dropped in sometime during the day uh, as long as it's before that particular schedule that you have it'll go ahead and kick it off right you don't want it to run as soon as the, the file is dropped in so we have scenarios that way as well so in those particular cases we'll use the schedule uh, starting source and we'll look at those examples uh, in the next couple of videos okay uh, stay tuned thank you for watching